So if you can bring any of those supplies anytime in the next, uh, I, they don't leave until uh, the end of June, 20, 29th of June. Okay, so any time up till the 22nd of June. And we will, uh, we'll have either a big box or a big sack right here that we will, we will put it in. And then I'll take it over uh, to Larry and Barry. And we need a lot more people to go. You still Everybody need people? Go. You got, they told me you had over 50 people there. Uh, so if anybody else wants to go or take grandchildren, y'all, I promise, it is wonderful. We, we took ours for 10 years and uh, until they were teenagers and could drive themselves. <laughs> you know, we, we were praying for 150 children to come to Bible school. There are 217 kids that are registered for Bible school. Already, that is great. And at great. the last minute, we may have more. Yes, that is great. That mm -hmm. is great. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, we were praying for 250, not 150, but 250. So we'll keep praying for that number. We'll keep praying for that number. Mm -hmm. Also, as you sit, go, uh, uh, you'll also see uh, hooked on to the uh, prayer list uh, a sign up for Leo. Uh, the Lingles, Mel and uh, Joanne, and Joanne is real sick with a migraine this morning, but Mel came, and Mel is going making homemade, not bought, but homemade manicotti for us, and then all the, we, I know, oh yes, and so all we had to bring are salads, breads, and desserts. What about drinks? Uh, well, we're going to have iced tea, lemonade, and water, and That's enough. bring anything else, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that I'm one. looking forward to it. Oh, thank you so much. And I put the address, I know you can't see it, but it is 1116, 1116 Ligustrum Trail in McDonough. It's off of 20. It's on this side of the highway, so that makes it good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, let me tell you something else that's changed. Uh, uh, Brian Lowe came in this morning and was setting up the, the um, camera, and he said, now you don't even have to go to YouTube to see our class, uh, uh, it, which comes on a Sunday afternoon, I think. All you have to do is go to Google and put in Life Groups J. Now, you put it in with Life a space, Groups a space, and J. Life Groups J, spaces between each, and it comes up, and I think it has pictures so that you can see our class and and uh, and everything. J. What? Life Groups J. J, like Jonesboro, J, with a space between a life and groups and a space between groups and J. And and I am praying by faith that I want to delay all my medical appointments to after November. Because in November, they're going to be opening the cafeteria. And Tammy, I don't know how, but they called her and they gave her a good reference. So by faith, I'm going to start working in the cafeteria. Right. You put that on the prayer list, okay? All right. Uh, uh, anything else we need to, to know about? Great to see everybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, I will say one other thing. The impact... I just noticed this impact mentoring information and training meeting happens today, right after the service uh, at 12:15 in room 200. Now let me tell you what that is all about. Uh, and Kim, you can tell us. <laughs> uh, why don't you stand up, Kim? Okay. As you know, many of you may know Kim Barnett and her husband Danny were here last week, and they are part of our class now. Kim is the uh, principal at Jonesboro Middle School. And so tell us about Impact Mentoring. All right, so that is a program that allows um, any of the members from First Baptist to volunteer to mentor a student at Jonesboro Middle. Um, we match the mentors with the student and we have several members already who participate in that program and some have followed the student even after they left Jonesboro Middle and have gone to high school, building relationships with not just the student, but with the parents. Um, the only thing that you have to do is get a background check 
I've already signed um, the background application. So um, Michael and Vermil, they have the applications and I'm sure they'll share that this afternoon. But it is a great program. Um, our students, I, I tell people all the time, we have students who, um, you know, they, they're great kids. They've had some challenges. And in the beginning, sometimes, you know, they, they make you prove that, that you really do love them <laughs> because they've had people abandon them. So you have to show them that you're going to be there. And uh, um, I'm sure you'll hear testimony from those who participated in the program. If you are able to go to the training session this afternoon or the information session. But the relationships are just amazing. They're just, they're valuable. And we're wanting to really grow that program so that we can reach even more students. So. I implore you, if your heart is moved, if you feel so called, please um, attend this session. And if you ever have any questions at all, you know, please just ask me. Yes. What time is the session? It's today. It is today. Today, right after church uh, in room 200. Okay. And it's Vermeil and Michael are the ones that are leading it. And uh, and they have all the information, but they'll mentoring both at Jonesboro Middle School and at Lee Street Elementary School, if you'd prefer um, a, a elementary uh, oh, if, student. If middle school scares you. Since you're part of, the, of our class, the mentoring program I was advised was not good for me because I don't drive and I can't get yeah. home. But is there other areas I can volunteer in your school? I can even do a background check where I can lead kids to the different classrooms and launch in the school. Yes, stuff. definitely. And we can talk about that yes. anytime. So just let me know if you can get that okay. background check. Okay, we're going over. Okay. So, uh, so put that uh, on your calendar or in your heart as, uh, as we uh, impact the next generation. As we impact the next generation. Okay, uh, we are glad that Jeff's back is better, that Gwen's hip is better. <laughs> and just for your information, Vermeil is having another eye surgery on her other eye uh, this coming Tuesday, so uh, be sure to keep her in prayer. Uh, Tommy and I took food last week. And and so if Connie, if you if you would be glad to if you'll help uh Connie with the meal. Um, um, and like Joy said, two of us can do it together, so, you know, like yeah, I did. Yeah, like we did last time. Uh huh. Okay, let, let Connie know. <clears throat> okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our blessed Heavenly Father, you are holy. Holy, holy. <coughs> Help us just to dwell on that. Hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that you are the are so holy and so magnificent. And yet in your magnificence, you have come and you love us individually. Father, that's a mystery. We don't understand it. But we are so thankful, so thankful, Father, that you have shown your love for us your unsurpassing love, your incredible love, your indescribable love through Jesus Christ, that you will care for us, look after us, hear our prayers, watch over us in the struggles of life. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for the healing of, of those uh, in our class who have been uh, struggling. We pray, Heavenly Father, for for uh, Joanne and for um, um, and and for others, Heavenly Father, who who are under the weather right now, and Heavenly Father uh, for Sharon, that's who, who it was, who's under the weather right now, and Heavenly Father, I just pray that you will guide and direct us in our study today as we look at your word. Father, we're thankful for the, as I read somewhere this week, for the two books that you have written. One book that you have written is creation, and we praise you for that. The other book you have written 
is your word, the Bible. And we praise you for that so that we can know you better, Father, and we can know you personally. Guide us today in our thoughts. Guide us today through our hearts and speak directly into our minds, Heavenly Father, as we study your word in looking toward true spirituality. We ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let me just, uh, before we begin, and because we have uh, several new people in our class, let me just, uh, does everybody have a book? Everybody has a book. Okay, we've got books here, we've got books here, and I've got, you need a book? Okay. Zach, you need a book? Okay. You'll get that too, right? Okay. Kelly, do you have one? Is that the new one? Okay. All right. Okay. Let me just show you a little something about these books that we, we have that our church uh, generously buys for us. We don't have to pay for them, which is uh, incredible, incredible generosity. But in each of these books, we usually have two studies. One usually is what is called a classic, meaning uh, a, a theologian, a pastor, or a spiritual writer has written a sort of a classic uh, study. It could be, uh, the person could be already uh, passed away. Billy Graham, we've studied things by him. We've studied things from, from the past. Uh, and, but books that are considered classics. The other study is usually by a more a contemporary uh, author. And so we, that's usually the two studies that we, we have in the book. But if you open to the front page, on the back of the front page is the plan of salvation. I would encourage you, every one of you, to read over that plan of salvation, making sure that this is this black page right over here. Yeah, uh, this is the plan. It's called How to Become a Christian. Now, you may need to, this is on, uh, on the fly leaf of every, uh, of every study. You may want to take this to some of the people that you write who are lost on the, our prayer uh, list. And you can just tear, tear it off, or tear it off the, the old book uh, and, and just read it with them. And, uh, and, and it will help explain how to become a Christian. Then uh, you will notice that as we study, you will have uh, each study, each of the two studies begins with a little bio of the author and then a sort of an overview of the, uh, of the lesson, of the, of the book that we're going to study. This is a, a little overview and what the purpose of the author's study is. And then you will notice that uh, each lesson is divided into five days. Many people use these five days as a part of their devotion even. And, uh, and so like on Monday, they would read day one and, and also fill in, see, fill in some of these uh, questions that they ask. And that's just for your devotion. That's just for you. It's not anything that you will be asked to share with anybody uh, unless it's, uh, it's uh, you know, what you want to. It's, uh, you don't get grades on it. That's exactly right. <laughs> you don't get graded on it. And so day two would be Tuesday. Day three would be Wednesday and through Friday. Then it has a leader's guide. If you ever want to teach, you can read that. I do rarely go by that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can, but if you want to teach and feel insecure about it, you could go by, go by that. But I just wanted to give you an idea of how the book, uh, how can you use this book that is, is really good. I've saved all of mine. I have... Um, I've run out of room in my bookcase. That's <laughs> all they're stacked up. Well, Bundy, <laughs> Web gave us an idea too that once you get finished with the book, you can give them to either Bundy Webb or somebody and they take them to prison ministries. 
in the prison ministry, they can use these. Okay, if you want to to give, you can just bring them up here and I'll take them to Bunny. That's a great, mm -hmm. great thing. All right, so if you'll turn to page six, and, uh, and let me just tell you a little bit about Francis Schaeffer. He was born in 1912 and died in 1984. So this would be what? The classic. <laughs> this would be the classic. And, uh, and you'll see that he was an American evangelist, uh, theologian, philosopher, author, pastor. Uh, and he started a ministry in Europe, in Switzerland, called Labri, L-A-B-R-I, which means shelter. And uh, people come there, uh, I mean, it's still going on now, and he's developed these, even some in the United States. But, uh, but he, uh, he had a, in his own life, had a crisis of faith. Uh, and this was before World War II. This was before World War II. This was actually in the 30s. And what he was seeing is that Christians were very unloving people. He was seeing that those who were professed, and he was a pastor, those who were professing Christ as their Savior were not acting in a loving way toward their fellow man. And it so uh, uh, affected him that he actually uh, almost decided to give up the faith. He thought that, what is this Christianity? Nobody, what the Bible says, uh, uh, how a Christian should act, is not what he's seeing in real life. And so he... He spent time. Uh, he spent time studying God's word. He spent time. Um, um, he, he spent time a lot of time in prayer and thought. Uh, he spent time until God began to speak to him and and help him through that and brought him back to faith, uh, true faith. And that's one of the reasons he wrote this a book called True Spirituality. Uh, well, in fact, it was not really a book to begin with. It was actually a series of lectures that he gave. And so, uh, and so that out of that has come what we are going to be studying in five lessons, true spirituality. Now, you will have to know that it's, uh, you, well, I'll, I'll tell you about that. But, but one of the things that he says is... Uh, as he goes into true spirituality, what he considers true spirituality, uh, he, he's saying that every, uh, that everybody is born. This is life. This is your life. And your life, all of our lives, begin at a special point. Our physical life begins no matter where we uh, come from, no matter where in the world, no matter what year, no matter what, our spiritual life, I mean our physical life begins when we were born. Okay, so we were all born. We were all born. We, we were all in a mother's womb. We were all out of that womb. And when we came out of that womb, we were born to physical life. You agree with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so we all started at the same place. We all started at the same place. Yeah, uh, physically. So what are some things that have happened in your life since you have been born? What are some markers in your life? You learned to walk. You you grew physically. Walk. Uh, you grew in all sorts of ways physically. What else happened has happened in your life? You grow spiritually. 
Well, we're just talking about physical, your physical life. We're going to get to spiritual in a minute. School. 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 You went to school, you were educated. What else has happened? Married. Most of you were married. No. No. No, no. No, no. Great. What? You were loved. You what? Loved. You loved? You were loved. You were in love? You were loved. You were loved. Loved. You were loved. You were loved. Yeah. Yeah. We were being loved. Love, yes, yes, yes. That's what I. That's what I said. You were loved. Yeah. But what, all people loved? No. 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 Some were not loved. No. Some were not loved. Some were even abused. Mm -hmm. Or damaged. They sure were. Or damaged. They sure were. What else has happened? Children. What? Children. Oh, you had children. And tribe. And some were a joy. <laughs> some were a challenge. <laughs> you experienced loss. Huh? You experienced you loss. All, I, how many of you have experienced loss in some way or another? We all have. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, you experienced loss. loss. Wait. Not lost, but lost. <laughs> All experience loss. All of those, and we all are going to die. die. Yes. Now, that's what happens in our spiritual life. But look, I drew another line, and this line is our spiritual life. Here we go, Becky. <laughs> this is, but just like our physical life, we were all born, how do we become a Christian? How do we become, how do we become a Christian? Born again. What? Born again. We are born again. We are born, what, my goodness, we are born again? We go back in our mother's womb. Who has uh, John 3, uh, 3, 3? Tamika? Stand up and read it loud for us. How many of you remember a, a guy in the Bible named Nicodemus? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you remember I'm Nicodemus? Sure, yeah. Nicodemus was, was a Pharisee. Yeah, no. uh, he was a Pharisee. And, and when he came to Jesus, and he was asking Jesus about it. And what did Jesus say? Unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of God begins when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It begins there. Now, it doesn't end with death. It ends with eternal life. Okay. So, somebody else, how do you how do you become a Christian? How do you accept the love and forgiveness? Uh, who has John 14, 6? Okay, stand up. Oh, just read loud. You don't have to say that. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There is no other way. Just like there's no other way to be born uh, physically except from the womb and out into uh and out into the physical life there is no other way to be born spiritually except through jesus christ except through. and so what does that do for us what does that do for us in john 10 10 okay. who has that all right uh, i have come that they may have life and have it beautiful Oh, and have it more abundantly or have it to the full. He's come that you may have life and have it to the full. So in your spiritual life, what are some markers in your sport? You were born again. 
when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So since that time, what are some markers in your spiritual life that you can point back to that were so meaningful? You were baptized. You were baptized? Does baptized, being baptized save you? No. No, it's no? an ordinance. It's an ordinance. It's a sign of obedience. It's a sign of obedience. Your first step of obedience. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, but it doesn't mean that you're saved. You're saved before you're baptized. All right. What what else? What is another marker in your spiritual life it's that you process. can remember? It's authorship classes. Okay. You have uh, taken classes. What are some markers? Do God. What? Do God. Do God. Talk to God. Talk to God. Do you talk about oh, prayer. Yes. You begin praying. <laughs> Wow, the difference in, in your prayer life. What else is not a marker that you can think of that has happened to you in your spiritual life? What? The power of the Holy Spirit living within you. Right? Give me an example of that. Um, let's see. Well, the Holy Spirit, one thing he does, he convicts you of sin. Yes. Um, he guides you. Um, has anybody been convicted of sin before? Yeah. Everybody raise your hand. <laughs> Everybody raise your hand. <laughs> and if you have been convicted of sin, and what else? Given counsel in the right direction. Okay, counsel. What else? Received the gift. From the Holy Spirit. You receive gifts from the Holy Spirit. Right. Did you say trials or the Thank you. Things yes. <laughs> yes. We have, we certainly have trials up here, our struggles, our disappointments. Uh, but we have trials here. What is the difference between the struggles in our rate in our life and our struggles, uh, trials in our spiritual life? Well, struggles is where you're taking matters in your own hand. With trials, you have Jesus in you, and with Jesus, two cords are better than one cord because two cords won't break, and the Spirit uh, pulls you out of those struggles and out of those. Ecclesiastes, <laughs> good. Yes, grace. because you have God with you he to help grace. you through these trials. And uh, and sometimes these trials affect your spiritual life mm -hmm. and even deepen your spiritual life. Mm -hmm. How many of you have had a trial? You know, let me tell you what, but a trial that has deepened your spiritual life. Mm -hmm. I certainly Many have. times. I have too. Many I have times. Too. And because we, at that point, have the Lord Jesus to help us through that. The Holy mm -hmm. Spirit to help mm -hmm. us through that. Anybody else have a, a marker, a spiritual marker? Leading someone else to the Lord. Do what? Leading someone else to the Lord. Oh, is that not the most exciting thing in the world? Yeah. Oh, leading someone else to the Lord. Uh, I'm just going to put witness in. Can you go along that those same lines? When you hear down the road that you have an effect on someone's life just by your testimony. And rather than be prideful about it, how does it affect you? It humbles you. It humbles you. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. I praise you for using me. It, it immediately humbles you rather than to be proud or prideful of it. We were all born the same way to life. We were all born again the same way through Jesus Christ to a spiritual life. Uh, so, uh, so this is, uh, in other words, we were born again to live. We were born again to live. Mm -hmm. Not only to live here on earth, but to live eternally. 
Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, many Christians, especially back, well, I think probably today too, uh, have said to be a real Christian, you also must follow a bunch of do's and don'ts. Do this, don't do this, or you won't be spiritual enough, or you maybe uh, you won't even be a Christian if you don't do certain things, or maybe you will be a backslidden Christian if you do, if you don't do certain things. Schaefer says the Christian life and true spirituality are not outward it's inward. at all, but they are inward. inward. Re, does that remind you of anything that we have just studied? Think just a minute about deeper. Where was the, you saw the flower grow, but where was the major part of deeper? It was at the roots. Underneath, underneath, where when you see a flower grow, you don't see the roots down there. You see the flower and the greenery and that kind of thing. But the roots are what make the flower grow. The roots are what stabilizes the Christian. Mm -hmm. And so we go deeper, and we oftentimes we only see what is produced, but it's produced because we have gone deeper, deeper with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, remember Schaefer was deeply concerned that there were so many Christians who didn't show love to their fellow man, uh, he about chucked it all. Oh, I, I forgot to tell y'all. In this study that we are studying, you will have to notice that we said it's a classic. It was written probably around 1948, somewhere around there. Uh, but um, uh, maybe before then even. Uh, but anyway... Uh, you have to remember he was you he uses the King James when he he writes scripture you'll notice it's King James version so you might want to look it up in a more modern version if that's your pleasure also when he uses the word man which it was always it's always meant mankind man in King James version means mankind. It doesn't just mm -hmm. mean men. Mm -hmm. So just wanted to let you be mm -hmm. sure you knew that. Mm -hmm. He went back to the Bible. He prayed and thought and struggled with being born to purity, living the Christian life without a whole lot of don't do this and don't do that and don't do this and don't do that. And so this is what he came up with. Turn in your Bibles to Matthew 22 and then... Look at me. Flip over to Exodus 20. We're going to go back and forth between Matthew 22 and Exodus 20. Okay? So mark, mark that. Matthew 22. Exodus 34 through 40, I think. And Exodus 20, 3 through 17. Okay. First of all, hold your place in Matthew 22. Flip to Exodus uh, 20. <laughs> That's okay. I'll just put it over here. I'm not going to use it at this point. Um, we look at Exodus 20, verses 3 through 17, and what do you see? Ten commandments. Ten commandments. The law. A bunch of rules, right? Mm -hmm. Are they good rules or bad rules? They're good. They're good rules. They absolutely are. Aren't we to follow them? Yes. Yeah. Which one of these is the most important? I hold it, hold it right there. Now, hold, hold, uh, and you'll see uh, the first commandment in verse 3 says what? I have no other gods before me. The second one is what? Love your neighbor. No, not yet. The second one is, thou shalt not make for yourself an image, an idol. The third, number seven, 
Verse 7, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord. Take the Lord's name in vain. The uh, Verse 8, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Verse, uh, verse 12, honor your father and mother, which pretty much means uh, courtesy, respect, uh, the importance of a strong family. Then verse uh, 13, you shall not murder. Verse 14, not commit adultery. Verse 15, not steal. Verse 16, uh, not lie or give false testimony. Verse 17, not covet. Okay, hold that. Those are good, good laws. That kept, keeps society and spirituality in good shape. Hold it and turn back over to uh, Matthew 22, verse 34. Okay. Now, Jesus, in verse 34, Jesus has just talked to the Sadducees who did not believe in an afterlife. He talked to them about the resurrection. But then in verse 34, it says, hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, he had, he had pretty much, uh, you know, uh, explained to the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. And one of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Now, you, which is the most important? Now, you have to know the background there. The Pharisees, from the Ten Commandments, had developed something over 600 laws. Mm -hmm. They were in three categories. One category of the laws was ceremonial. And that talked about, uh, uh, you know, when you're supposed to uh, kill a, a bull or a sheep or a, a dove or a, and when you're supposed, how you're supposed to uh, put it on the altar and drain the blood and how you're supposed to, uh, you know, not uh, do anything on uh, the Sabbath and how many steps you take and how many stitches you can literally put in a garment before it is called work. And it was over 600. But I mean, and that, but the ceremonial. But what it was, the principle of all of those ceremonial laws is that's a day of worship. Is that wrong? No. No. That's what it's talking about. There is a day of worship and that we need to worship, the importance of worship. Then a group of the laws was called civil uh, principles. Uh, and it was talking about uh, divorce. It was talking about murder. It was talking about uh, living in a civil, uh, civil situation. Now, it got to be really mixed up with that. But the idea was, and it was, you know, who gets stoned and who doesn't get stoned and <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, but it was, the good thing about it was it was talked about how to relate to God's nature and to each other, how we relate to God's nature and to each other. And then uh, the last part, no, excuse me, that was, that was civil. The mor then the last part were the moral laws. Now, the moral laws included pretty much the Ten Commandments and uh, revealing God's nature and how to relate to each other. Did Jesus throw away all of the laws? No, he didn't come to, no. uh, he didn't what? Come to condemn it, but to fulfill the law. But to fulfill the law. That's in Matthew uh, 5, where Jesus said, I have not come to, uh, uh, let's see, Matthew 5, uh, 19 and 20, where Jesus said, uh, where Jesus says, do you think that I've come to abolish the law of the prophets, the law, uh, the law or the prophets? I have not come to abolish them, 
but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter nor the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Now, so what is Jesus saying here? Uh, uh, he, they said, which is the greatest, which is the most important uh, law? And, uh, and Jesus replied in verse 37, Matthew 22, mm -hmm. verse 37, he gives you the clue. Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with what? All your heart and with all your, and with all your, this is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like to it, like unto it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And then Jesus says, pretty much this summarizes everything. Everything. If you can obey these in loving God with everything you have and loving each other, and loving each other, then you have fulfilled all the commandments. Mm -hmm. All right, now turn back to Exodus 20. Let's see if that works. If I love God with all my heart and all my soul and all my mind, will I have another God before me? No. If I love God with all my heart, soul, and mind, will I make an, another image? No. And that, relating to today's time, means yeah. what will I put ahead of God? Will I make an image of success? Will I make an image of money? Will I make an image of uh, of uh, anything? Any? Will I make an image of of um, good times, of of uh, hobbies, recreation? Will that be the first thing that uh, that I will use? Will I put that above God? But if Jesus says, I love God with all my heart, all soul, and mind. I won't make an image of anything. He will always be first. Then it says, you are not to misuse the name. Uh, you people that are having to leave, let me just tell you this. Uh, the last, uh, the last uh, law is covet. Now, the interesting thing about Schaefer, he takes the covet, that shall not covet, and goes back and looks at all the other laws, which is so interesting, that if I don't covet anything, I will always put God first. If I don't covet anything, I will uh, put my parents first. If I don't covet anything, I won't murder, I won't lie, I won't steal. Uh, it's really interesting how he does that. But for us right now, as these people leave, um, if I love the Lord with all my heart, I won't misuse his name in vain. I won't misuse his name. Uh, Dr. Blackaby, Dr. Henry Blackaby, used to say, and this just struck me, I, not that I said it, but it struck me so, if you say, oh, God, and so many people say that, and you ladies, uh, some of the men too, who have ever watched uh, HGTV, and the couple walks into a, their new decorated house and all, at least half, if not more, the first words they say is, oh God, when they walk in. What Dr. Blackaby was saying is, when you call the name of God, oh God, God hears. He hears his name being called. And he says, what does my child want? He, my child is calling my name. And then you don't want anything? <coughs> Why is he calling my name? And it can be truly uh, the wrong way. I, uh, I think that he said, and I don't, don't quote me on this, that wonder if God just says, they just call my name in such frivolous ways. Why should I even listen to them? Wow. Can you imagine that? I bet you hear children saying that. And even in uh, in junior high, in middle school. Wow. Listen carefully now. If I love the Lord with all my heart, you know, worshiping him will be my first priority. 
and worshiping him will be my first priority. But at the same time, if I love my neighbor as myself, <coughs> if will I honor my parents? Yeah, it doesn't mean you, as a grown person, you obey your parents, but you will honor them. You will respect them. If you, uh, if you love others as yourself, there's no murder. There's no adultery. There's no stealing. There's no lying. There's no coveting. Oh, folks, just two things. Just two things. Love God with everything you have. Love others as yourself. Just two things. Uh, it's a great summary, but but let me ask you something. How do we deny what we say we believe? We believe these things. How do we deny it? Sometimes on a daily basis. Loving God with all your heart, mind, and soul. How do we deny that? What? Not doing it. Not doing it? Yeah. Do we not do it often? Mm -hmm. Am I the only one? No. <laughs> <laughs> how do we how do we deny what we believe if we say love others as yourself? By having what? Condition. Conditions of love. Conditional love. Yes. 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 Conditional love. I will love you if. I will love you when. Yes. That's that conditional love. And so many of us, so so many times we deny that. Now, uh, just just think about, uh, j uh, uh, very quickly, I want to just very quickly uh, give you this. Um, Schaefer holds one uh, uh, commandment, the last commandment, thou shalt not covet, uh, as, as probably the most important in the sense of the Ten Commandments. Because he says, if, if what I was just saying to the group that left, if you don't covet, you won't commit adultery. If you don't covet, you won't steal. If you don't covet. And covet, I just want you to know, means more than just being jealous about something. It's a deep-seated envy. It's a resentment. It's a resentment. Wanting something that somebody else has. Now, we always think of it as money. And folks, poor people are, are just as covetousness or covetous as rich people uh, all uh, you know about money and the possessions but there are other ways to covet you covet perhaps success you covet perhaps a promotion in your job how did that person get a promotion and I didn't you covet uh, you can even covet respect they that person is respected. That person is appreciated. Why am I not appreciated? Ah, you covet, You can covet respect and appreciation that should be ours. What? Oh. You covet good health. And you covet good health. Bless your heart. You do. I know you do. And and those are those are some things you. You could, but what is, and, and oh, this is one thing I want to just end with, is oftentimes one of the biggest places we covet is with our siblings. Now think about it. Connie came from a family of 11. Mm -hmm. She has uh, 10 brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, even as grown-ups, we will covet something our brother or sister has or appreciated or respected, mm -hmm. uh, and it shows up in wills when our parents die more than any other place. It can show up there. When I wanted that, 
I, that was mine. And you go back and forth. Let me give you just the quickly the opposites, the opposites of covetousness. There are three opposites of covetousness. One is contentment. One is contentment. In Philippians 4.10, Paul says, I have learned to be content no matter what the circumstances. Wow. I have learned to be content no matter what the circumstances. The second opposite of covetousness is gratitude. Man's rebellion against God begins with the lack of a thankful heart. Mm. Romans 121 says, even though they said they knew God, they didn't glorify him and weren't thankful. Isn't that interesting? No matter what, those people at Calvary last Tuesday night, every one of them were thankful. It made me, when we were having our prayers uh, that night, Say, God, thank you for a place to hold, put my head tonight. I don't know when I'd said that. It made me realize how thankful in just little things I could be. So, so the opposite of, of covetousness is not only uh, contentment, it's gratitude. And the last one, the last one, the opposite of uh, covetousness is uh, is love. Listen, this this tore my life upside down when I was in college. When I read these verses in First John four twenty and twenty one, it says, "Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother uh, or sister is a liar." Now, my grandmother would have washed my mouth out with soap for saying the word liar. Yes. That was something ladies did not say. That was a big word. I mean, it, it, it was so important. Whoever claims to love God and hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must, M-U-S-T, must also love his brother or sister. All loving the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul, and loving your neighbor as yourself, you must, you must uh embody contentment and gratitude and love. Uh, they are all inter internal, but they are the first place of loss of true spirituality. Inside of you, the first place of loss of true spirituality is internally. The outward sinful acts uh, are the result of what is inside of you. Is that just not get over your face? Folks, this, this is a big lesson. If you have not read it, I would uh, encourage you to go back and read it. Uh, but let's, help, let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. Oh, Father, your word says that we are crucified in Christ and he lives in us. Help us to apply your word and live contently, contently, gratefully, lovingly with all we come in contact, even this very week. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. True spirituality. Great having you all here. Oh, folks, I forgot to tell you. I didn't have it written down. We're going to have coffee next week. If anybody wants to bring a goodie, that will be fine. Uh, but uh, 
lots going on toward the end of the month, and so we're going to have coffee next week. So um, I'll send a note out to everybody. It was great seeing you. Sure, see you. Yeah. 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 Oh, you did? No. You did. Oh, I did. I'm off it. That's what I'm doing. That's your hair. That's all you need. Oh, Mel. Still a little tight. I've taken one of the models. What time do you get off work? I don't know. Oh, okay. I'll let you know. I'll let you know.